All right, everybody, I think I've got the Hangout thing down, so hopefully you catch my intro this time. This is Chris with Drop Dice. Uh, what I'm doing right now is actually just kind of a special event for you guys. And let me look at something here. All right, sorry about that. I just had a pop-up that I had to take care of. So I'm doing a special event for you guys. Um, essentially, cartography has kind of been the big talk around the community lately. So what I wanted to do was a cartography starter box. Uh, usually when you get a new RPG, they always have these starter boxes that are out there for cheap and everything like that. I'm not going to charge anything for this. This is just kind of a courtesy, and I want to thank uh, Robert Ogre and the other members of the uh, RPG Map Makers Consortium who kind of spurred on this idea. Because it seems like there's a lot of people that want to try cartography for their games, whether it's just mapping a city or mapping a world. And I've noticed that mapping a world tends to be a little bit more daunting for player, or for people. So I kind of put this thing together real quick. Let me just set it up real quick, and we'll kind of talk about it. And I'm going to have some links inside this video for you guys. This is going to be a super quick rundown of... Um, of how to do it. It's not going to be longer like my other map videos, but if you want more details, check out my channel. I'm doing a world builder series and explaining like where cities should be located. In this one, I'm just going to show you how the how to basically use the cartography kit. Um, so let's go ahead and do some screen sharing real quick here. All right, everybody. So this right here is my logo for Drop Dice. Uh, this will be important in a second here. What I'd like to talk to you about is the kind of maps that you can make with our cartography starter box set, which is this here area right here. So I included a couple things. Um, Chelsea mentioned she liked seeing the color on the map, so I included a C layer. What I basically did is how I normally start games is I start with a level of like papyrus or some sort of textured background to give it kind of a look like that. This is kind of an easy go-to is that papyrus or like old-fashioned paper where you get a lot of these um, character lines inside of it from people having it inside their pockets, mashing around, or whatever they may be doing with it. Now, the other thing that uh, we did is I set, set these layers up. There's a C layer and a land layer you can see here. Go ahead and turn back on that C layer. Now, the way it's doing this, I've mentioned it before, multiply is going to be your best friend while drawing a map. Uh, your different layers, if you want to have the, the texture of that paper shine through, multiply everything. Um, and that'll work, too, if you do, like, a different kind of texture, like you want to make it look like your map was painted on a desk of, a, or like, a table at an inn. You can use, like, a wood texture and then do a multiply, and it'll show that wood grain through the image. How this map is going to work is you're going to turn on your C layer, and turn on your land layer. It's going to look a little funky. And this is where I mentioned to everybody that, uh, you know, when starting a map, I usually sketch something out, and then I'll use Photoshop. And this is how I do it. This is where our, our drop dice icon is going to come in handy here. So what I'll do is I'll highlight the outside area. I'm sorry. I need to merge this real quick because it's actually not going to work until it's a flat image. Normally, when you scan in a flat image, you don't have all these layers, so this isn't going to be a problem for you. If you do use something that has multiple layers, what you can do is just kind of right-click on it, and you'll see all these different options here. And what you're looking for is, here we go, this set of options. I accidentally clicked in the uh, effects. You'll see Merge Layers. Just do that. That'll make it all one level. We'll just bring up our... So with the the... One tool, there's actually two options. There's quick selection, which you see a lot of people use for their, for like picking out a character to create an overlay. Um, for this, because it's so well defined, magic wand will actually work best. We'll just click in the area that is not it, and then we'll come up here to select, inverse it, or you can do shift control I in Photoshop. That'll just select my drop dice logo. So I want to copy that, and then I'm going to take it over to my campaign, my cartographer starter box. Just drop it in there. Uh, this one is kind of a funky color because of where it landed. If you notice, it's between C and the land. The land is technically above it and in multiply. So just to make it clear, there it is right above the land. And that kind of lets you know how multiply works. Anything that is above it will gain the color of that. If you notice, the, the area here is kind of a greenish color. That's because I have a land layer and a sea layer together. Let me take my land layer and shrink it down a little bit just so you kind of have a quick idea. See how that goes? You've got the the sea color, which is going to be this rich blue, and then you've got this land color, which is kind of this off color. Now, 
there's a little bit more to it, and I'm going to show you the tricks to make this land color actually look more like land once we're all done. So I want to make a country that is shaped like my drop dice logo. That's kind of the, the quick and dirty here. So let's go ahead and increase this sucker. Uh, you know, it's going to be Detenia, the land of adventure. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, again, we're going to click this negative space around the sketch that I'm using. But this time what I'm going to do is now that it's selected, I'll click on land and delete everything I don't need. Boom. And then what I'll do is I'll keep this selection, but I'm going to inverse it. And then I'll click on the C layer, and I'm going to delete everything I don't need from there. Now, if you look at my two little icons here, here's the land, here's the sea, which look very much like each other. And so what ends up happening is, is you have this land layer and the sea layer that look like they go cookie cutter right into each other. And when I turn off this layer, you can totally see it. Now that works great if your land is very crisp and already has good well-defined lines. This would be very unrealistic as an island, so let me show you a quick trick on how to do this. For what I'm about to do, what I want to do is actually take a step back and refill in my sea. I want to go back to this land layer, and then what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm just going to shift it over to normal, that way I can clearly see it, and then I'm going to create a new layer. And this layer, we're just going to call this one um, for now. Now, I'm not going to create a texture layer for the cartography starter box. Instead, I'm going to let you guys kind of create your own texture layers because it's very simple to do. And every time you create a texture layer, it's going to be unique. All right, so the first thing you want to do is shift your palette to where you have white and then also shift it to where you have a black. If you see anything that I'm doing that could be shortcutted through other tricks of, of Photoshop, please keep in mind I'm keeping this very simple for anybody who, who doesn't know how to use Photoshop in, in all the ways that you may possibly know. So now you've got this black and white palette right here. What you're going to do then is go ahead and you're on your new layer already. This time what we're going to do is go over to Filter, and then we're going to Render. And you can use clouds or difference clouds. I like difference clouds because we're going to do two sets of filters on this layer. So, oh, I'm sorry, you can't have anything selected. That's my fault there. So we go over to filter. We're going to render, do some difference clouds, and uh, it's running into a problem. I see what's going on. Your new layer, you have to fill it in with some sort of color first. So I'm just going to drop in white. Uh, now, you may have noticed that little bit of lag time on how how quickly it took to fill up this screen. This map, the more detailed you get it, it's going to take longer because I set it to where it's 36 inches by 24 inches, and it's on 300 PPI, which means that if you were to print it, it would be as good of quality as a photograph. Um, that's actually the best that printers can do until you start getting into some super high-end pricing equipment. Um, if you want to use it for, t for internet use, I, I mentioned it before on my channel, you can actually come in here and go into image size and you can adjust your resolution to 72, which is the appropriate size for the internet. And if you notice when I adjusted that 72, it changes the pixel dimensions and it changes the size of my file. You can also change the height and width of this, of this if you happen to want to change it. If you do change it in kind of a weird way, like instead of being like, um, wide like this setup is in a landscape setup and you try to do a portrait setup where it's tall, you're probably going to have to create a new a new textured layer beyond the one that I have. For now, I'm going to keep it 300 because, again, this is super, super regular, like, easy stuff that we're doing right now. But that just gives you an idea how you can reshape it. So now I've got this colored white line, or layer, rather. Let's go ahead and add those difference clouds. See, this is what I was missing earlier here. Like I said, because we're talking about a big file, it's going to fill in kind of slowly. So here's what Difference Clouds looks like. It's kind of a mess. It doesn't make sense yet, but I promise it will. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and go back into Filter. We're going to go under Artistic and then use Cutout. Now, what Cutout is used for in Photoshop is for people who like to do, um, you may have seen like Banksy and stencil work, what you can do is do Cutout, and then you can apply a number of layers. So let's go ahead and do two layers, which 
again, it's going to take a little bit of time just because of the size of it. If you want to speed up the process and make things a little easier on yourself, um, definitely, definitely reduce the size. Um, there is a trick to doing maps. If you start with a larger size, and then before you start adding the text, you reduce its size in half, you'll actually have really crisp lines when it comes to the land. Um, like your coastlines will look really clean and crisp. Um, but don't do it to your text, because your text will look a little funny once it gets reduced. It'll also change things if you use um, different overlays and things like that, or let's say you use an outer glow to make your text stand out. If you if you reduce it and it's got that outer glow on, your outer glow may stretch too far or be too condensed and it'll make the word kind of hard to read. All right, so we've got just a little bit more time here. Now, this, this video is actually gonna go up on quite a few different channels. Um, one of those channels does happen to be the RPG One Shot group, which is on Facebook. I mention it on my channel all the time. If you're looking for games to attend, things to do, that is a great group of guys to do it with. There's also the uh, Wild Wild West, or W3 group, on Facebook. Uh, that is another group that also does some different games and stuff like that. And they've got a bunch of cartographers or aspiring cartographers in that group. And then lastly, I'll also be posting it to the RPG Brigade um, as well which uh, those guys are pretty much who you can seek out uh, on Facebook to find different RPG-related channels. So if you happen to have found my channel but haven't found some of the other channels that are out there, definitely check all of those people out on Facebook. Um, you'll find everything from instructional videos like this one to just content that will help you with managing your own games, running games, and even playing games sometimes. All right, so now we've got these clouds down. Again, it still looks like a mess, and it's kind of hard to determine what's going on. So what you can do is do multiply. Now it kind of looks like I've got leopard spots here, but that's totally okay. What you can do here is you see how there's these little jagged marks right here? You can click on your land layer, and let's say I like this jagged mark. I can go to my texture, and I can click on that. And if I do that, it's again in the magic wand, it's going to highlight all of this area and maybe all of this I don't need. If if you get lucky and you click on one of these and it just takes out a small section that doesn't ruin the rest of your map like this one would, then go for it. So let's try that. So this one isn't going to ruin the rest of my land. I can just click on that, then I can click on land and delete it. And then now if I turn off this layer, you can clearly see that I have some choppy land right here. If that doesn't happen, what you can do is switch over to your quick selection, and you can kind of highlight inside there. And if you drag it around, boom, it'll highlight that one area. And then you can come over here, do another area. Let's see if that worked. It's kind of slowing down on me here. I see what it is. If you notice that this isn't working, you may have your brush set to, to be a negative brush where you're subtracting from a selected area. Make sure you are adding to a selected area or else you're going to sit here like me for a couple seconds and have just kind of this weird dead spot in your instructional video. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so you can take your brush and highlight an area that you want to cut out. And you don't need to be spot on or perfect because when you get done with these selections, you're going to do the exact same thing we did last time. You're going to go ahead and select your land layer once it's all, all highlighted, and then you can just delete. Now this is kind of the, the uh, what some people might call like a cheater method to create these textured lands, but honestly, it, don't worry about that because when it comes to using different tools for art and things like that, tools are not considered cheating. It is considered good judgment and skill to be able to use tools. So if you feel kind of guilty about making your coast like this, don't worry about it. And so what I like to do is sometimes do an inlet like this and this one, and then I'll turn around and I'll take an eraser. I'll drop it down to somewhere around 10 to kind of start. And I'll start kind of like carving out my own thing. And let's say I don't like how far that goes, but I want to cut it off right there. What I can do then once that's done is switch back over to my magic wand because I've got this clear cut line right here. I can click on the area I don't want anymore. Boom, it's gone. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and 
deselect here. So now I've got this, this really neat little coast right here. That's as far as I'm going to go for this video. You can follow that process, go all the way around your little sculpt, your, your island here. But let me show you what happens when I turn it back to multiply the way it was originally. We still have that funky green color going on. What you can do is say you want to use your, your funky green here for something that's actually useful. What you can do is create a second layer. So let's duplicate this layer. And we're going to say um, post one, this layer. And now it's turned an even darker green. Now let me, let me kind of show you where we're going with this one. So I mentioned in my video there's a trick that you can do to resize things and keep them dead center. If you hold shift and then you click on the corner and press alt, it's going to resize the whole thing from the center making it grow accurately. Now, sorry about that, my mic just cut out. Now, what I would suggest is keeping your coasts fairly close. So really something like this, uh, right around here. That's, that's real close right there and you can kind of see it. And then what I wanna do is take this land and solidify it, and then I want to switch over to the land layer. I want to highlight the land that I have colored. There it is. And then I'm going to select C, and I'm going to delete the C underneath. Now, again, we're going to focus mainly on this area. The coast one is actually above the land, so what I want to do is shift the land above coast one. And the reason for that is this land is on multiply, this coast is also going to be on multiply. This will kind of keep your layers um, separate. Hold on just a second. You can notice that there's a little bit of a difference in color if I have it right there or I move it to there. It's, it's very minute. It's a personal preference. I think putting the C and the coast together makes the most sense in my brain. And then let's say you want to have your coast expand out. What you can do to make that nice and easy is you can do an outer glow. You can change your outer glow's color and do something like a green because that layer is already kind of starting to look a little greenish. Do that and then let's go ahead and spread out the noise a little bit. And then you can play with your opacity. If you notice right here, it's actually getting a little bit brighter as I kind of play with this. Uh, the noise you're going to see kind of get a little bit more spread. Let's get a little closer to this thing so you can see what's going on. with the noise, if you notice, it's getting all kind of saturated looking there. You can turn that down, and I usually turn it to about this range where it looks very glowy, and then you can adjust your opacity. Like I said, this one kind of is good to keep a little bit higher, and then you can adjust your spread. And your spread will kind of go out. And uh, for Miss Chelsea, I know that she was doing a two-layer coast. This is kind of what I was talking about. You can kind of adjust these layers play with it a little bit, and this gives you kind of a different way to go about it. So that would be if you wanted to have a two-layer coast, a very simple, easy way to do it, and then you can take this coast layer and actually do something different where you dissolve it, um, which will kind of give you a faded look, and then change it to a green color to match up with this. If you were to do that, it will look like you have two steps of, of ocean um, step-offs. Uh, things like the Pacific Ocean have that. Now, if you go to like the East Coast, the East Coast usually has one sea cliff and then it opens up an open ocean. Um, if you want to have that kind of effect, let's go ahead and turn off the coast. You do the exact same thing, the outer glow on the land layer. So let's go ahead and set that real quick here. An outer glow, click on it. We don't want yellow because that's not going to work for us. Let's go ahead and shift it over to nice green because... A lot of waters in reality are not all that blue, and that's due to chemicals, changes, and pollution in the area. So, I mean, if your world is is really rich, maybe yours is blue. So let's go with a let's go with a real soft blue here, uh, something like that. That should stand out pretty well. Okay, and then let's go ahead and play with it a little bit more. 
So we've got this, this little layer that you can see right there. I like having my noise up just a little bit. Again, spread out, play with your opacity and get it to an area that you really like the look of it. So that right there is a pretty good size for me, but I want to increase my spread to show my coastlines. So there's a pretty good coastline right there. And then you can also increase your size. If you increase the size and decrease your spread, you're going to notice that there's more fading out. And so what you want to find is kind of this happy medium to where it looks a little fuzzy. Um, when you look at your map like that, it, the, your coastlines are going to make more sense. So there it is in kind of this fuzzy look. And let's go ahead and zoom out. Look how clean and good that coastline looks now. That's something you can totally knock out in just a short time. I mean, it took me two, three seconds to get that little coastline down. Most of your time on a map is going to be spent on outlining the, the land itself. Now that we've got that done, let's talk about some of the features that I included inside here for you guys. We're going to just zoom out all the way. So I included a set of compasses. If you click on that, there they go. These are all multiplied. These are the set that I shared before. Uh, these are your regular compass roses and your compasses, which the small ones without the spokes sticking out are compasses. The larger ones with spokes sticking out are compass roses. Compass roses are usually used as your normal indicator of north, east, west, and south. The other thing I included in here is two little dots. One of these, if you open it up, is labeled town, and one of them is labeled capital. If you want to use dots instead of using a brush to mark out where your cities are, this is a kind of a, an easy way to do it. You'll have two different kinds. And if you wanted to have even a, uh, a village icon as well, you can make a different circle that follows the basic same format. Um, and that's pretty easy there. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And then lastly, let's talk about fonts. I'm going to include which fonts I've put here. Let me get the land out of the way so it's easy to see this stuff. All right, so this is what I was talking about. With the land out of the way, you can actually see the map underneath. It's a little hard to see, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to color in the ocean real quick. So here's kind of a cheater trick. If you switch over to your brush, go to the layer you want, and then hit Alt, you're going to notice you get this little eyedropper. If you click that, it's going to go right into your primary color, and then just drop it where you want it, and then there you go. It It's close enough for what I need right now. I just want to make sure that you guys can see these these fonts right here. Um, normally when you when you draw a color, you want to do it on a normal filter, not a multiply, or else you'll get an off color like this. Let's go ahead and deselect. So these are the fonts that I have listed on the description that I'm using. Uh, Booter05 is part of a Booter series. Uh, it may be called Free Booter or Booter, depending on where you're getting it. Um, but I like this for kind of pirate-style maps. I think it's got a good flavor for that. Um, it's also very good for like continents and things like that, the big name stuff in the world. Uh, the next one is Garmond. Garmond is actually a very traditional digital font format, or digital font format rather. And so um, you'll see that pretty commonplace in a lot of different maps. Uh, Viking games have become a little bit more popular lately, so I included Viking Normal. Uh, that kind of that font is actually super easy to find thanks to the popularity of that Viking show on History Channel, which is fun and good if you haven't seen it. Uh, the next one is Tajin Pro. Um, Tajin Pro was originally used for um, which which game was it? Um, I forget the name of it, but the one that uh, that Warforged originally came out in, that's one of the fonts that they use inside their game, and I like it. It's a very clean, crisp format, and it's nice and easy to read. If you notice, I've used it for my Drop Dice logo here as well. Um, this is actually stylized. It's got some embossing and some drop shadows to make it look like that. So if you want to do that, make sure you play with your different uh, effects options that you can do. To get the effects, if I wasn't clear on that, all you have to do is just double click in an open spot and then it'll right open up that window for you. Then you can do all sorts of stuff. For these words, I would recommend a stroke at like one pixel. It'll help it stand out a little bit. And an outer glow in probably a yellow color to contrast with your, your land being a sepia color. If you do your land in a different color, like let's say green for grass, or you, you just regionalize it and you, just what I would do is any words that are above a specific region, I would pick the same color as that region, but make it a little lighter. So if it's a red, go with something like a pink. That way you have a tonal difference. 
All right, so let's go ahead and cancel out of that. The next one is Dist Inc. I do a lot of Oriental themed games. And so I picked up Dist Inc. a long time ago. I like it. It looks like it was done with an ink brush, which is nice. The other one I like here is Johan 2, which is good if you want to make your, your map look like it's a drawing, which you can do that with filters, actually. So let me show you one more thing real quick here, and then we'll wrap up, and I'll release this to you, everybody in all the groups. So let's say, uh, let me go back here. I'm going to take out that seam that I filled in, and then I'm going to turn back on my land. So let's say we've got this right here. I want to make this a little bit more of like a hand-drawn look. What I can do is come up here to Image, and then I can go Adjustments. And then from here, what you can do is you can, you can make some different changes inside here. One of the things that you guys should be aware of is selective coloring, which allows you to select a color and change that color to a different one. So if like you have a character that's got a red belt on and you need it to be a blue belt because of the way you describe your character, that's how you can do that. For what we're doing, what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and desaturate. This can be done with shift Control u as a shortcut, but if you notice, that kinda brings it down in tonation, and then what you can do is go back to your filters, you can go artistic, and if you wanna have it a colored pencil, you can go that way. But from, the, from here, what I would look at is, mm -mm, let me pull it up here, it may not be that one, it might be a different one here. Here we go. Brush strokes is what I was looking for. There's one of them called inked outlines. If you do that, it'll kind of pull up this preview screen. The preview screen is going to take forever because we're working with such a large document. Let's kind of screw, scroll out here. Here's kind of the quick nitty gritty of it. So what you can do is play with these filters and see which ones you like and, and why you like them. This one is just doing this one layer where the land is. Um, what you're going to want to do is, when you get done, condense it down to one layer. Crosshatch is usually my favorite. You can't really see what's going on here at the moment, but if we zoom in a little bit, we should start to see what's going on. So part of what it's doing is it's kind of jagging the coast on its own as well. Uh, crosshatch, it's actually a little better to look at this icon. Essentially, it, crosshatching is where you take your pencil and you go left to right and in opposite orders. Um, so starting at the top right to the bottom left, top left to bottom right. Uh, there's also angled strokes, which is how I personally draw. So if I was to go with something that I wanted my players to kind of feel like it was a drawn map by someone who, who draws like me, I would probably go with uh, angled strokes just because it, it, it makes sense for me. Um, there's tons of different options in here, and you've got a lot of different stuff you can do. Uh, the one that I would kind of stay away from is watercolor. It looks a little weird, to be honest. Um, there's one that does charcoal, which looks really good, actually, just as, as a quick throw on for a filter. Um, here we go, char and charcoal. Um, if you notice, it's kind of got these feathered edges right here. And that's because when you use charcoal, you that's what something that becomes a byproduct of the process. So those are just kind of options that you can do to kind of get that effect. Um, and to give you an idea, this map was done in a similar fashion. So we've got my continent name, town name, forest river. Here's my rivers. And this is basically, I was doing it real quick just to kind of give you guys something to look at. These rivers don't make sense, I understand that, but I wanted to kind of show you what could quickly be done. When you when you do your rivers, just keep in mind that rivers flow from mountains to the land or possibly the ocean if they connect. If you do that, your map will look fine, I promise. Uh, as you look at different stuff, keep in mind there's a couple different rules and tricks that you can follow. For a lot of that stuff, uh, my best suggestion would be to check out other maps and other people's videos because they'll definitely have some good pointers for you. All right, this video went a little bit longer than I expected, but thank you for tuning in. And uh, for those of you that are looking to join the RPG Cartographer Guild, or excuse me, RPG uh, Map Makers Consortium, I'm part of two different groups, so I get those mixed up. The RPG Map Makers Consortium, uh, just let us know, um, specifically Robert Ogre, who is the moderator of the group. And uh, so long as so long as he gives you approval, you'll be able to gain access. And if not, you'll definitely have free access to this little uh, cartography starter box set that I put together. 
All right, guys. If this is your first time viewing me, please like, comment, share, or subscribe. And I will see you at the gaming table. This has been Chris with Drop Dice. Thank you.